Hello everyone, this is Kremble from Emotionless Crypto Trading. Here we go with another video presentation on Bitcoin's price analysis. What we're going to do today is collecting data around the industry, putting it together like a puzzle and sharing you the probabilities for both directions as price analysis. As you usually know, we're not doing any sort of financial investments, advices or, um, you know, predictions. We don't do that here. We're trying to do something way, way, way more important is sharing data that we're collecting by doing research and telling you what are the probabilities. This is the rational way of looking at the crypto space and the industry of trading, right? So $137 billion, right there, market cap increased slowly over the last few days with some of the alts moving differently than the overall space right which represents that there was space for them to breathe and that's what they did there was some great announcements for the early of the year right so as we already know some projects we're waiting for early 2019 to present new roadmaps new milestones achieved new details events in whatever could bring in marketing in their company which resulted in little price increases compared to the overall market movement and that's where the market cap have increased from there because btc is still stucking at four thousand dollars along with the other cryptocurrencies as well 22 uh 24 hours volume is 22 billion dollars which is higher than what it used to be as average now the reason behind that is of course the alts are reacting on all this news that are specifically on the projects which are doing something and they have something to show people in 2019. BTC dominance, that's the proof right there, 51.5, it decreased. If you remember, it was 55%. Now it's 51.5, which means alts increased against BTC. Great. Uh, let's go over the technical side. This is what we care about. And what we have here is the 30 minute candlestick Bitcoin paired up with the US dollar from BitMEX exchange. 30 minute, once again, I'm telling you. Short term details. What we're collecting here, the information is specifically for the short term. A bunch of the green lines, of course, a lot of the green lines, but that's just data. Let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to start from left to right. An important price point is here at the bottom in the current bottom that we have it's called swing low support establishing two trending lines you can see the one establishes on the lower side and just goes like that which keeps the entire structure that is directed as uptrend right now then we have another one basically which is also having high implementations within the current short-term structure right here Okay, so the upper side of the trending line right here, the green one that goes just like this, has a bunch of reactions during the previous structure and continuous reactions during the active structure. I can see that as the most important trending line of the current uptrending channel right this rectangle right here that i'm going to point with x this entire rectangle this one basically the most important trending line is the one that i just represented earlier with a lot of the confirmations and activities great let me just clear this thing up we're going towards beautiful so the next thing is on the upper side what we have here which also had a breakout at this point is the resistance line of the first structure which appears right there the resistance line has multiple confirmations with a false breakout and a bunch of resistance appearing at the right time great time for day traders to short the market great so that's what something that happened in the previous structure what we have right here in the last days uh, starting from 7th of January is a swing high resistance point that establishes a trending line it comes down the way just like this you can see how this trending line basically 
is pretty much putting pressure on the market a few times during a few days, activating it correctly, that it breaks out, supports the market, and now we would have to see if it's this gonna support us once again. But what happens on the other side, we do have the important trending line, the upper side of the trending line that appears here from the swing low support, right? The upper side, a green one, the one I was just, just speaking earlier. This one reacts as a resistance over here as well. Something that we have spoken about. Another thing that is crucial for this little short term period is the double top resistance point confirmed. Something we would have expected when we have seen the breakout of the swing high resistance line. This one right here. The market broke out of it here. And we're just going towards to a possibility of confirming on a double top, which actually happened. We did confirm there. Now, this thing tells me a lot of the information. One is that bulls were not having enough power after a breakout to cross that previous resistance point, And they were as weak as forming a double top resistance, which is telling me that the market refused to go above $4,100. It refused to go above that. Bulls were not enough powerful to take control over the market at a higher level of that. Period. There's another thing that tells me as well on how fast it came back in the same structure. And we can see the reaction after the increase. You can see the right side of this V pattern. A V pattern looks like this. It's actually a reversed V pattern. And you can look at the right side of it. Take a look how red is that and how long candlestick you have from the top presenting us a long wick, which is the rejection part. Right? So the rejection not only happened as a wick of previous candlestick, but it also continued within the bodies of the next candlesticks, creating long red ones. And after that, of course, there is nothing meaningful right now. The market is preparing for a bigger movement. That's what it does. So be aware, guys. See where the breakout is happening above or below and trade it after the breakouts. Don't trade before that. It makes no sense to do it. Let's take a look at another thing as detailed. But first of all, let me just clear a little bit this screen right here with all the drawings I made. Great. That's all. What we're going to do is have the Fibonacci retracement point, which needs to be considered as well during a chart like this because it gives us healthy information. Uh, it's going to be difficult for you to see what's written here on the left side for all the numbers and lines that are meaningful of the Fibonacci retracement tool. Right, but starting from the bottom, we've got the point twenty three six line, the red one, which goes strictly like that, and it keeps our structure above. Basically, it acts as support pretty nicely. It acts as support over here, over here as well, over here as well, and it just continues like that. So keep in mind. 3,700 as represented over here as well, is acting as support even on the Fibonacci part. 3,000, uh, no, I'm sorry, we have the next Fibonacci point, point 0.382, which also reacted as resistance and support. Look at this, false breakout, reacted, reacted, supported, false breakout, acting as resistance, acting as support, acting as support, breaks out. That's where we had it with 0.382. Usually what we have to take out of a Fibonacci retracement point is the important price points that are represented on the structure of it, right? So 0.5 represents resistance right here, right here, and we could expect support from it. 0.6, which is right here, represents support for the current structure. You see how many times that thing reacted like it would be handcrafted, and that's what it does. 
So we could expect that as well, if we meet here, it's going to appear as double support because we have the trending line activating plus the 0.5 Fibonacci line, double support point. If we break below that, the power that comes out of it as a calculation and data means that it's huge. It's like a hurricane breaking two important support points. 0.78, six Fibonacci point comes in with resistance, resistance and the double top formation right there. This is the story of the Fibonacci on the 30 minute candlestick with all the points of it, all of them have a high representation on the charts, which is great because that is data you can implement and use in your future trading. Beautiful. Let's take a look at the four hour candlestick and this is where we are. There is a triangle about to form right now for once again. So if we break out of the resistance line of the triangle right here, then we're going to have the possibility to fight against the 4,400, 4,500 resistance zone. That's what it's there. If we break below of the triangle and we hit the support line of it, then we would have to deal with 3,600 on the longer term. And of course, the 3,200, 3,100 support point as well. These are the points that we would have to deal and just take a look at the fact that it is not a long distance from the bottom. It's only 28% right now compared to the huge movements over the past few months. This is not huge at all. 28% for the BTC as long term movement. On the other side, I did want to share with you something. You see, I've got a few lines over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this thing up and share with you something. Take a look at this part. That is looking like a nice recovery phase, right? So that's the way it looks like. That proves and tells us even after a recovery phase, which is 18% across 27 days, right? So 27 days of steady increase in the market. Think about this. Didn't meant anything because look what happened afterwards. Look at the crash we just had. What happened before the 27 days of increase, steady increase? It was a market that was parabolically facing day by day crashes. Right? So sort of a way, a same environment like this crashes over the crashes, parabolic movements and large volumes on the bearish side. This one to me looks like a comeback. The same like here. Oops. Right. So the same like this. And this one, it looks like that. But what is left is this part right here. If this part right here is put in over here, then we should have a market crashing just like that. We should sound like the final capitulation as a lot of the people are calling it. Right now, let me tell you another thing. Maybe you're confused. Maybe you think that we're trying to do predictions. No, we don't try to do this. What we're trying to do is to collect information from the charts because that is the only thing we could use as to predict the probabilities and not the movement is two different things. It is bullish and bearish, but I'm going to mark this with the R. Always and always at every single situation, you've got both as probability, but one of it might have 90% chances against 10% chances to happen. That is the difference basically between the traders. There's one category of people that is above 90% 
and they are looking for predictions. And there is the other, I would say, less than 5% of people, of traders, looking to collect information about the probabilities and decide upon that. If we have a probability of 90% for the bearish, because that's what the entire data we have collected tells us. And in order to read that data, you need to know how to read the price analysis and the technical side. That's what you need to understand this language of the charts. Against another probability which still exists, the bearish one, which is just 10%. How are you going to react? Of course, in the direction where the higher probability is. And that's the way it works. This is what trading is. This is what trying to put here. But the quantity of information we're doing it on YouTube is tried to be structured in a way to be understandable for everyone out there. Even for the ones which do not have experience in charts or knowledge, skills in understanding trading of crypto. I'm making these videos understandable for you guys as well. And for the ones which are already experienced, they know how this works. It's an exercise for you guys. Right? For me, it's an exercise as well. I enjoy creating charts like this. I enjoy sharing data that is meaningful and I know it brings money to people. Remember, we're in the era where the information represents money. So if I share an information, I might exchange it for money. If the space crypto is sharing an information, it might necessitate money from you. Don't pay the money. Be the one that is taking the money. Let others pay the money, right? Because the market is always charging. There's takers and givers and the battle between the ones that winning and losing continuously. At the time you're selling, there's someone buying. You're making money, he's probably losing. Of course, he could get short or long and he could make money as well. But just we're giving an example right now. There's always this battle. Beautiful. Let me show you what does it mean to push propaganda and bullshit news. Look at this. Russia could start a Bitcoin bull run as early as February 2019. A Russian economist believes, attention, he believes that the implementing US sanctions against Russia will force the country to start diversifying its reserves with Bitcoin as early as February 2019, Mickey reported on January 8th, 2019. And if you read this post continuously, you're going to see the amount of nonsense I mean, completely non-rational sentences and ideas that are created in this industry's media. It is just purely to manipulate you. What is this? Nothing, guys. This is nothing. Anyone could say and say, you know, anyone could just come out and say, I believe BTC is one billion dollar by the end of February. Why? Because I believe something anyone could have said. Then the media starts and shares it. What kind of media is that? Think about it. Look at it. Here's another. France starts selling Bitcoin at six tobacco shops. 6,500 by next month. Where's the logic? We've got hundreds of thousands of shops all around the world utilizing Bitcoin. All right, so there's another six shops or 24,000 more that do not give a close relation to the price of the market attention. When we were $20,000, we didn't have these hundreds of thousands of shops, tens of thousands of shops all around the world. We didn't have those. And we were 
twenty thousand dollars. So the price on the trading side is one industry and the implementation of cryptocurrencies in the financial system of the world is different because what they do is they implement the blockchain and the crypto as payment method stop talking about a price when you do this price is referring to a different industry and it do not shares a reaction in a particular way as always on absolute so if it's more shops more money as value for BTC no it does not have a relation like that and we were able to see that during 2018 the implementation in the real world of the cryptocurrencies were very very high but that doesn't mean the price was one million dollars the end of the story is right there Ripple five more banks fintechs will use xrp cryptocurrency you know if you want to do a transaction just test it out along with btc for example or ethereum test it out with ripple use a tag as a payment as well and see you get paid in two seconds that's why we have putting the total over 200 institutions financial institutions that join ripple net already because they are proving they are proving they are progressing they are having results and they are worth it more than 200 companies institutions and big players in the world are joining the space of ripple because it brings a benefit and that is the role of blockchain to bring benefits not speaking about the prices those will react in cycles and of course naturally cycles whether it to be manipulated or not if a human wants to manipulate it then he manipulates the market then it's still calculated as a natural movement because manipulation is part of trading since the early days of the world since goes with trading we didn't have stock markets from the first days of the world of course but talking about a period um since we had stocks at trade from that time things are manipulated so that is the natural way and behavior of the space by being manipulated right it's normal it is very very normal great that's pretty much all about this video feel free to share that uh, to hit that subscribe button then after we've got the bell click that bell you get a notification whenever i'm posting and we stay updated to the date we post here things about icos cryptocurrency news technical analysis lessons about crypto space and life and other things that we're trying to share here on youtube every other day right so let's just keep in touch feel free to put a like right there your opinion in the comments area and i'll talk to you soon have a beautiful day